Hello and welcome back to Galgorm Hall. You may already remember from a previous update that I've been looking at getting a ghost sign applied to the side of this house. There are ghost signs available on the market in a sticker format but with this being an embossed brick I was concerned that by putting a sticker onto it uh, you wouldn't, you wouldn't um, get it right into the recesses of each and every bit of mortar and I wasn't too happy about that. So what I had thought was that if I was able to get some form of stencil made then I could paint my own onto the side of the house. So with that in mind I gave Justin a call at Scale Model Scenery and I sent him over what I wanted and he was able to laser cut me a stencil for me to test and this is what we've come up with so basically the sheet comes in two sections the upper section is an open window which in most cases unfortunately not in mine because the size of the wall is a little bit too large you would lay your um, outer stance or outer template onto that and then on the inner one you can see the marked lines there to cut that out and set that within the outer onto your wall and then once that's in place what we will do is um, paint in the lettering for the actual uh, advertising in this case Lipton's tea. Once that's removed then I'll show you what we need to do next but what we'll do first is because this is a little bit uh, out of scale in terms of the, 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 the template that is available to me I'm going to trim this down and ha get it into place and I'll show you the first stage of what needs doing uh, to pr produce our ghost sign. Okay, so I'll be back in a wee minute once it gets set up. Okay, so that's all now in place, and basically what I've done is I've cut the stencil out and I've tried to center it as best as I can on this gable wall and then attached some Tamiya masking tape to keep it into place. So the next stage now is that we want to do the white lettering of the Lipton's T itself and what we're going to do is use a sponge and we'll fold the sponge up into a ball as much as we can and with a very very small amount of white acrylic paint you will need very very little of this because the idea is that we want to make this as faded looking as possible so I'm putting it onto the sponge and I'm basically taking most of it off and it's much easier to add a little bit more as and when you would want it rather than trying to remove it afterwards and we're just going to dab it over the letters and if we do need to put more paint onto it we'll do that <laughs> which in this case I think I might have to um, it turns out that it's a little bit warmer up here tonight than normal and the wee dabs of paint that I'm getting on the sponge are drying off before I even get to put it to the wall Let's have a go this time with a bit more paint on. That's a bit better now. But like I say, we want very little on it there. If you put it on too much, it's just going to basically come out as a block sign. And in this instance, we don't want that. Now, these stencils could work just as well in modern gauge layouts as period ones 
um, ghost signs are something that you still have, there's quite a prevalence of them around the country. You just need to look up occasionally at the, uh, the sides of these buildings and you may well spot one. So that maybe is as much as I'm going to do on that. You could say I do want a faded. And hopefully you can see that the glare of the plastic. The end's quite heavy. The zero's quite or the zero. The the O is quite heavy, as is the T. But some of these others have faded out quite a bit, and that's just exactly what I want. So we need to let it leave that to dry. Um, we'll give that maybe in this heat we'll probably should be able to do it again in about half an hour and I'll come back to you whenever we're ready for the next stage. So with the, um, the, the paint dried now on the lettering I've removed the template and as you can see it really is quite faded and what we want to do now is to add the background. Now you'll see that I have masked this off again with the uh, Tamiya ma uh, masking tape but what if you have an area large enough that you can apply this sign yourself you can use the template that is provided with the kit and basically you would just put that right over where the uh, the template went stick that into place and then that's your uh, your frame for the signage uh, it's only because I don't have the space on this wall to work with that that um, I've gone with this approach now before we do this background we need to protect the white lettering that we've already put into place and what we're going to use for that is some uh, Humbrol Mascol. Now I'm sure most of you will be aware of what Humbrol Mascol is. It's basically a protective agent that goes on like a paint but turns into uh, like a, a rubbery substance um, and just uh, pr gives a, a protective film over your uh, the work that you've done previously that it doesn't get destroyed so all I'm going to do is to paint over the signage with that mask all to protect the white now I'm not concerning myself too much with total perfection because we are going for a ghost sign so everything will be broken up but I do want to try and make sure that as much of the lettering is protected as possible. Now I, um, I'll give you a little bit of uh, the test method that I used. Uh, what I did was I kept the stencil in place and applied the uh, the mask all or the mask all with the stencil in place. But whenever I removed the stencil, I found that there was quite a bit of the um, the mask all that was sort of leaching in underneath, um, which wouldn't help with the final desired effect. So I think this is the better approach here by just doing it by hand. So I will go ahead and finish this. Um, the mask all takes about 20 minutes, it says, on the jar. Um, for it to go off uh, before you can do your next painting stage so once that's done I'll come back and I'll show you the next stage okay so the Humbrol mask all has settled now onto that lettering and but once again we've got the sponge out and we're going to do our blue background in this case for the Lipton's tea now for that I am using What's that? Windsor Blue and an, an acrylic paint and the colour is Windsor Blue. It's a nice deep rich blue and it, I think it fairly well represents or matches the, um, the colour of those old signs quite well. So once again we'll take our paint and we're going to remove as much of it as possible. Now in the case of the blue I would be even more cautious as to how much you find yourself putting onto your brickwork because it will shout out at you and I would be as light as I can in your touch 
and build it up slowly because it will show up very stark if you do get it too much onto it and hopefully you can see that that's beginning to build up there and we're just trying to be as random as possible with it and hopefully what we will do with this is to build up a nice weathered appearance to the brick and you need very little of this blue paint I actually had to go out and buy a tube of this just for this project I'm going to have to find a few more projects with that colour in it uh, to make some more use of it and just add another wee bit to the sponge and again wipe the excess off And in the case of this, I think less is more. Because once the paper is peeled off and the mask all comes off too, we'll, um, we'll see quite a difference in that colour. It's just knowing when to stop. What do you think? A wee bit more? Right, well we'll do a wee bit more. There. I think this will be my last pass over it. Just one last wee dab of paint. Worst case says, if we peel the the, um, the the masking tape back and take off the mask all, and we don't think it's enough, it's not a big deal to have to tape it up again and do once more. Okay, I'm going to leave it there. So, we should leave that to dry. It shouldn't take too long and we can come back and look at it in a few minutes whenever we peel everything off. Right, ready for the big reveal. So we'll take the masking tape off first and hopefully it's done its jobs round the edges. it's just a bit of a smudge on a wall at the minute and then if we just use our finger and peel off the mask off and it comes off lovely and easily pretty good. Now what you may find that you have to do, and I don't think I actually have to in this one, on the letter 
O, the letter P, and the letter A, there will be little uh, joining lines, you know, whether it was laser cut, otherwise the whole letter, you know, the center of that letter would have fallen apart. So you may, just with a dry brush on a, of a paintbrush, is to dab a little bit onto that. I'm not sure I'm going to bother, I think. I think because it's gone on in such a random pattern, I think that looks okay. Um, but you may need to do that. But look, that's it. It's a really simple little kit. It's basically taken me, what, an hour this evening um, to produce that effect. And uh, I think it looks pretty good. I'm really pleased with that. Now, as I said, um, Justin, I believe, is going to have these on sale on his uh, website. He was just checking to make sure if the, the, the concept worked before he went ahead with it. So I will add the link in the description below. Now, it will be an affiliate link, which means that I get a little bit of something back for the channel if you click, click through that link to purchase it. Now, obviously, you're not obliged to do it that way. You could go directly to the website, but it's just to sort of let you know that there's an affiliate link there for that particular product. So that's it for this uh, little how-to and um, I hope you find it interesting and useful and I'll be back again soon with another one. Okay, take care guys, see you later.